Hey y'all, today let's chat about line plots. A line plot is a type of graph that displays data along a number line to show the frequency of each value. Now, depending on where you live, the standards you follow, you might introduce line plots in different grade levels. So if you follow the Texas Teaks, line plots are actually not introduced until third grade. However, if you follow the Common Core standards, they are introduced in second grade. So if you're ready, give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive in and get started. So what are line plots? A line plot shows how frequently something occurs by displaying data along a number line. Now, sometimes a line plot can be used to show categories rather than numbers, and I'll show you some examples later on in this video. I always introduce a new concept by creating an anchor chart. It's important for your students to understand the parts of a line plot and the vocabulary that is being used. So let's take a look at this example. And as we are creating a whole group anchor chart together to introduce the parts of a line plot, then we have symbols. When using line plots, symbols show each time a frequency occurs and they are usually represented by X's. Now frequency is just a fancy vocabulary term for how many times a number appears. Then the final part of a line plot is the number line or the category. This shows the number or categories that's being represented in the data that we are collecting. Once your students understand the different parts of a line plot, then it's important to show them how to read a line plot. So let's take a look at this example where students had to plot the number of children in their family. Prior to the lesson, I would have a blank template set up without any data recorded on it. And then I would give each student an X and they would have to plot their X or a symbol above the number of children in their family. Now during this time, I would explain that the word frequency means how many times something appears. So if more than one student has three children in their family, instead of putting their X right beside one another, they would place it on top. And after each child has plotted their answer, then we would analyze the data together. Since there are two X's above four, that means that two students in our class have four children in their family. Now, how many X's are above the three? Six. This means that six students in our class have three children in their family. Now, sometimes a line plot can show data based on different categories rather than numbers. And so in this example, our students had to plot which superpower was their favorite. And just by looking at this data, you can see three students chose transform and lightning speed while invisible was the class favorite with five students choosing that superpower. And so each time we create a whole group graph like this, I am reviewing the vocabulary of the different parts of the graph. And then we are talking about the frequency. How many times does each number or category occur? So in this example, because five students chose invisible as their favorite superpower, that means that the frequency for that category is the number five. Now, just like anything else, we want to provide our students with practice reading and creating line plots with examples that are going to engage their interest. And so one of my favorite ways to do this is by incorporating mathematical concepts that they have learned throughout the school year. So now I'm going to share five of my favorite line plot activities that you can find in my second and third grade guided math units. So first up, we have an example with place value. They had to write the value of each number shown under the flap in their math journal. Then they plotted how frequently each number appeared by drawing X's above that value on the number line. Numbers two and three incorporate measurement. 
One of my favorite small group activities is grabbing several small random items such as school supplies. These could be mini erasers, pencils, post-it notes, index cards, whatever you would like, and then placing them into a paper bag. Each child is going to take turns pulling an object out of the bag, and they are going to estimate the length of the object, use their ruler to measure the length, and then they have to plot their data based on the length of that object. The trick to this activity is finding multiple objects with the same frequency in length. Another favorite activity that combines measurement and line plots is called blow, measure, and plot. And I promise this is going to be a big hit. So on a flat surface such as a table or I'm actually going to recommend using the floor and you want to place a piece of tape down on the floor that's going to be the starting point. Each student is going to need a pom-pom ball and a straw. They're going to place their palm onto the piece of tape and then use their straw or to blow the palm across the floor. Then they're going to use a ruler or a measuring tape to measure how far their palm went and then they're going to plot the results on their graph. This is such a big hit with kids. It's really hands-on and I promise they're not even gonna realize that they're learning. Number four, you can also practice those addition skills because let's be real, math fact practice is something that they consistently need no matter what grade that they are in. So in this activity, I had students roll a die and then they had to add 10 to that number. Then they plotted the sum they repeated this about 20 times before they answered questions about their data. And then number five is to get those wiggles out by playing dance around and plot. You can use this with any sort of number or different categories. And in this example that I'm gonna show you, we're gonna be using shapes. So what you're gonna do is you are going to want to place shape cards in a large circle around the room. Each student is going to stand on a shape with a copy of their recording sheet and then you, the teacher, will play some music. And the kids will kind of dance and they'll walk around along the circle and then when the music stops, they must plot the shape that they landed on. You are going to repeat this process as time desires. Then they are going to answer questions about the data that they collected. This one is a class favorite. It gets them up and moving around the room and I promise they will love it. So let's quickly recap. The more hands-on and relatable we can make a concept, the more engaged students' learning will be. Overall, line plots are a really great way to represent the frequency of something. And the X's on the line plot represent a single time that a number or category was used or chosen. If you are looking for resources to help you teach about line plots and other types of graphs in your classroom, I'm gonna drop the links below to my guided math units for first through third grade, along with some other additional resources that I think could be helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.